Hannah said, my name is Bastia Ben Shushan. I am a native Houstonian. I'm a mother of three, and I'm the founder and CEO of a digital marketing agency called Pink Cilantro. Uh, today, I'm really excited to talk about honesty uh, because it's such a, we live in such a fast time that many times we don't even have enough time to really, you know, center ourselves and be honest with ourselves and have really important conversations that we have to have with ourselves. When I first started playing across digital spaces, it was 2008. This is when the iPhone just came out. So apps was like a new territory for people to play with. The social layer of the internet was MySpace. And it was a really exciting time for marketers and brands because this was the first time consumers could speak directly to brands in real time. So it was scary and exciting because they could hear more feedback quicker, but they also had to really con like face what the consumers thought about their products. And back then, just as I am today, I was really excited and optimistic about how that power of our voice could really shift the consumer market. Fast forward to um, 2018, uh, what we've seen with the social layer of the internet um, is people use this space to express themselves to the fullest. Now, without having to physically be present, you can express yourself in sort of a fantasized way. And we're seeing amazing connections between human beings. When Harvey hit, it was just emotionally moving to see how many people came together to help each other out. And, you know, on next door, if one of my neighbors lose their pet, it's kind of terrific to see how people can come together and help them find their furry friend. But we're also seeing another side to this. And um, we're seeing human characteristics magnified in, in such a tremendous way. Whether it's uh, bullying, gossiping, uh, being vain, or insecure. You, you know, you could write a comment across a, a social media feed without ha having to say it to somebody's face. And we're seeing people say things that they wouldn't really dare to say to somebody face to face. Or we're seeing boys and girls feel very insecure because they're scrolling through perfectly manicured feeds. And we're seeing this ability for people to just sit back and create this fantasy life of who they are versus really take this time to be present physically with themselves. And it's not necessarily a bad thing, it just is what it is. It's the nature of the beast. Social media and the internet provide such a connection. We are a global society because of this tool. For me, we live in the greatest times ever. That said, it could seem daunting, all of this noise, that somebody can create something that is false, a false reality, uh, with themselves and others around them. That said, what I've learned is the only thing you can really work on is your own station. You can't change somebody else's perception or choices. So with that, let's dive in. Today I'm gonna walk you through the value of practicing extreme honesty. It's working, okay. <laughs> So giving it, receiving it, and encouraging it. Lying is a deeply human trait. There's facts and stats out there that show that most of us lie to ourselves and others around us. And typically, the most popular and socially adept are the biggest liars among us. And there are many reasons why we lie. We 
want to, some are sinister, some are innocent. We want to protect the people that we love. We want to maintain a perception. We want to raise our status. We want to be loved and accepted. And as human as it is to lie within our nature, at the end of the day, it's also really important for us to build deep relationships with people around us. And as we know, lying can break that trust. So welcome to the bullshit-free zone. <laughs> Honesty is a way of life. It's not just a behavior. And it's not just about telling the truth either. It's about living a full and meaningful life. And telling the truth in a way that friends, family, and community will hear it and benefit from it. So I grew up in a family of six and Jewish household. My father's from Ukraine, extremely competitive. So anyone with Eastern European parents could relate to this. Um, constructive cri criticism was a gift. It was something that comforted you. Um, there was no sugar coating because there was always, there still, and I still am wired this way, there's always so much to do and I can get emotional thinking about this and so much to give and so much to achieve that like, s why slow down <laughs> and acknowledge what you're doing that's great. But I know that's not, not the healthiest mindset. Um, I just can't help it. So naturally, when I started to build my company and my team, this need to just really perform at our peak, um, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't see that giving feedback on what to improve on, like just straight from the hip, that's how I grew up, uh, put so much pressure on my team. I didn't realize that I wasn't approaching um, our growth in a way that was sustainable. And um, I really didn't sugarcoat. When, when somebody put a design in front of me, I just really uh, broke it down as, it, as, as I said, this is how we could be the best. Um, that said, one day, one of my team members walked into my office and they said, we really love the projects we get to work on here. But the way that your drive is, is not the way that our drive is, and this pressure is wearing us down. And I was so blind. I, I just, you know, you, you, sometimes you can't see outside your own bottle. This is who I, who I am. And I just was kind of hurt. Like, why didn't anyone confront me? And I had to take ownership, and I realized I just hadn't created that space for anyone to give me feedback. I was moving so fast that people were scared to, uh, you know, a mission. People were scared to tell me that this was just too much pressure. So just as important as it is to be honest and direct with people, it's also important to create the space for a relationship, for that direct feedback. Now my door is always open. I still have to slow myself down to you know, let people know, but um, I work on that because that's what's important to me. It's important that if you are being honest with somebody and direct with somebody, that you have a certain level of trust and you care. So forgetting that I have slides. So in order to be uh, e extremely honest, first and foremost, like I said, you have to be a human being. You have to care. You don't, either, you don't have the right to give somebody feedback or to be direct with them unless you really care. You know, I could be in the store and my kid's having a tantrum and a mother can come up to me and give me some advice and it's all in her approach. 
she could either look at me and judge me and I could feel like she's judging me or she could say, you know, my kid was doing that two months ago and this is what I did to nip it in the butt. It drives me crazy. I know exactly how you're feeling. Even though we don't have this long relationship, I know she cared. So I will take that feedback in and appreciate it. Challenge directly. No one appreciates the elephant in the room or when you pussyfoot around a problem. Care enough to know that it's okay to piss people off. Because in the long run, even though it's our human nature to be defensive, if it comes from a caring place, we will appreciate that insight. I'm sure all of you have, I remember a time when your teacher or your boss or your uh, friend has approached you and kind of confronted you on something that you're not doing that's, that could be offensive or that could be just not really helping you in life, where at first it could have felt like, oh God, like what does she know? It's, stop judging me. I'm going to live my best life. Um, but then you look back and you go, oh, it came from a place that they just wanted me to succeed. And they can see from the outside looking in that I'm just not that fancy or <laughs> just doesn't look good when you're behaving that way. So be humble be constructive, and give guidance immediately. Don't let things fester. When things fester, relationships that shouldn't deteriorate, deteriorate. So, how you ask. Um, we've probably all had a parent tell us this phrase, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Who are your had that, heard that as a kid. See, most of us. So we could all blame our parents for our, our lack of direct honesty. So how do you change this very learned behavior? It's not just from your parents. This is just in general, the way that we're conditioned. Put your own oxygen mask on first. You can't give a damn about somebody if you don't give a damn about yourself. In order to be honest with others, you have to be 100% honest with yourself. And we all go through experiences. You know, when you were a child, what you wanted to be when you grew up, it might not be what you are today. And you could be very happy with what you're doing today. We all go through these life-changing experiences of what we want to be doing in life. What, what is our priority even for the day? So be honest with yourself first. Then you can be honest with others. Make it easier to speak the truth. If you are in a position of leadership or it just, it just with a team, have an open door. Make stab, backstabbing impossible because you actually care. The worst thing is in the office setting or in a school setting is when something, somebody's doing something that's just kind of holding everyone back and everyone just gossips behind their back. That's not helpful or beneficial and that's really harmful for your own personal soul. So um, take impromptu guidance and give impromptu guidance. If you're going to be giving feedback, the relationship has to be a two-way street. As a leader, I'm always looking to improve, and we all know that nobody's perfect. We all have our fair share of wrongdoings or you know, times when you're kind of not really thinking about others, you're thinking about yourself and what's going on. You can't really feel what others are going through around you. It's so important for us to stop and prompt each other to acknowledge that we're not just in this for ourselves. We all have effect on each other. You know, a good example um, from my office, we had this summer intern and uh, she was really smart. She wore these really low tops and it was extremely distracting. So the team um, avoided bringing her to client meetings. And that was actually what she specifically wanted to get out of her internship. And it's really important for 
myself and us as a team to really have these interns come out with what they intended to come out with um, when they sign up. And people would talk about it behind her back and nobody really had the courage to confront her. So finally, one of the team members came up to me and said, you know, we just have to cut our internship short. She's getting in the way of the rest of the team. It's extremely distracting. And I said, don't worry, I'll take care of it. So I pulled Brittany aside. I said, hey, can we talk for a second? Um, you know, you wear these really low tops and you, you, you could see a lot of cleavage. I really want that when people look at you, they see how smart you are and what a great asset you are for the team and not something else. What do you think? What are your thoughts? And she says, she got really defensive, of course, that's our knee-jerk reaction. But then she, she let it sink in and, and uh, she was thankful because she saw that it came from a caring place. In order for her to succeed in any career, she has to show up professionally, looking as others do in the office. So, you know, I thanked her. Thank you so much for letting me have this conversation with you. It, I know it's awkward, um, but I would much rather you hear it from me than have people talk about it behind your back or somebody not tell you at all and you just end up missing out on opportunities. It, it was awkward. It's awkward to tell a grown-up how to dress. And it always is. But at the end of the day, I want her to succeed. I would want anyone to know what it takes to succeed. And that session took a total of what felt like for her probably three hours, but two minutes. It's so important to take the time out to be direct. So, again, how do we do this? It's not natural for us to put ourselves in the setting where it's awkward. People are defensive. And many times when we give feedback because we don't really know how to do it and we don't do it all the time, we come across very aggressive. It comes across very judgmental. So practice makes perfect. Be relentlessly insistent on showing up your fullest at work, at home, with everything that you do. When you come to work, bring your best. When you go home, bring your best. I'm of the mindset either you show up or you don't <laughs> come at all. Um, it's life, it's, life is not some su like zero-sum game. There's a, I, I don't believe in this work-life balance. It all comes together. This is your life. So if you need eight hours of sleep, it shouldn't come at the expense of your family or your team. It's important for you to know what you need to be balanced or to show up and get done what you intend to get done. To accomplish anything in life, you have to put in the work. And I'm not saying that, you know, and many times people lie to themselves about what they really want to accomplish. Many times people, some people want to sit back and enjoy their, themselves uh, at the beach. So you could easily make your goals. I'm gonna work for five years, save everything up in the bank and move to some South American uh, village and uh, spend $5 a day on my life. And this will be what I really want to do in life. And then they might wake up after two months and go, oh, I've changed my mind. But, you know, to accomplish anything, even that, you have to put in the work. Leave the job that you are complaining about. Or change your perspective on what it's going to take to accomplish your goals. Maybe this is the stepping stone to your big career move. Or maybe you have so much debt that you really have no other option. Change your perspective, you need it. 
No one gets a free pass. Being direct with ourselves and others, it doesn't come naturally. So practice makes perfect. Don't be the mom that tells their kid that they're good at something when they suck at it. Because when they grow up and they have to pay some bills, they realize they're not going to be the next Mark Zuckerberg and they're not going to be the next Taylor Swift. That's just like a big bomb on their head. So, the truth hurts, but bruised egos are much better than the alternative. Regret, selling yourself short, wasted efforts, missed deadlines, mediocrity, resentment that festers. Nobody needs that energy. Because at the end of the day, we're here to build each other up and hopefully leave a positive impact on the world around us. Thank you.